Welcome to Climate News by MT. One of the most prominent independent climate researchers in Finland is a special education teacher Simo Ruoho. With specialization in mathematics and complementing studies in astronomy, Simo has challenged the climate paradigm now for a few years. His field of interest lies in differentiating the two terms of climate change that we are subject to. The term climate change used in politics often refers to human contribution as the main factor, whereas the scientific term takes many variables into account. The foul use of this term might be a consequence of the use of the IPCC summary for policymakers in the media. The summary is poor compared to the full report and does not display the science behind the phenomena. Simo Ruoho has presented fascinating lectures, even understandable for lay people, but so far his presentations have been only in Finnish. However, in December he created both a Twitter account Simon G and a Facebook page The Climate by Simon G to begin his venture in English. Since the 1st of December, he has presented the followers with something he calls a G-drop every single day. The G-drop of yesterday was something that I could not just let pass without making a video of it. The G-drop presents a graph with a timeline from 1978 to the present. In the graph we can see two things. Something called G-index and a temperature anomaly of the global troposphere. The correlation between the satellite measured temperature anomaly and the G-index is staggering. So, what does the G-index consist of? Simo has integrated three significant factors to his index, which remarkably seems to explain the temperature fluctuations up to an R-value of 0.983 of the 37 months running average. Percentage-wise, the G-index consists of 62% of delayed heat release from the sea surface, 28 from volcanic eruptions, and 10 of direct solar irradiation. CMOS sources are the International Comprehensive Ocean Atmosphere Dataset, the VEI index, and the TSI by Lean et al. So, we have all seen climate models fail. Would they be more accurate built upon just a few factors like CMOS G-index? It begs the question, why is the G-index so accurate? So, let us take a look at the science behind it. CMOS presents it as follows. The sun mainly warms the oceans with the incoming short wave and UV radiation and also visible light that passes through the atmosphere and gets directly absorbed by the water. Two minor parts in the warming process are the indirect long-wave radiation that only advances a few centimeters in water, but also geothermal heat. Now, the oceans have two major circulations that contribute to the continuous heat transfer. A slow thermohaline circulation moving vast amounts of heat around the globe meridionally. It is crucial to know that only a part of that circulation is used in the short term to melt ice and to warm and balance the atmospheric temperature. The rest travels to circulate the Antarctic continent. The other circulation is the vast currents moving vertically. These we know as oscillations like AMO, PDO and ENSO. Typical for these oscillations are their periodicities by which they lift the heat to the surface, releasing it to the atmosphere. The delays for the heat releases are counted in hours, weeks, years, decades and even centuries. So it is crucial to understand the forms of the ocean bottoms, the tides caused by the moon, the long-term variability of the sun, and the speed of the thermohaline circulation and all its currents, to succeed in a model where the heat release is correctly displayed. So, why is there a heat transfer from the oceans? Well, global average sea surface temperature is about 6 degrees warmer than the global land surface, and several degrees warmer 
than the troposphere. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the net heat flow always takes place from the warmer to the colder through convection, radiation and latent heat. Due to the law of entropy, the transfer takes place where it is the easiest, mainly where the differences are the biggest and the blocking factors are the smallest. Simo's take on our temperature fluctuations is that we are enjoying the sun's energy from the past due to the delays of heat release of the oceans. He has informed that the coming G-drops will dive deeper into the long delays of decades and even centuries, and he also says that the past significant volcanic eruptions are still interestingly affecting the climate. I cannot wait to find out how. This video was a brief introduction to the work of Simo Ruoho, aka Simon G. Please follow him on Twitter and Facebook. I will leave the links down below. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and feel free to subscribe. And we shall meet again.